Welcome to Matter of Fact, I'm Soledad O'Brien. It is a fact that mass shootings rarely change the politics of guns in America. Many politicians say it's not the time to discuss changes to gun safety laws. It's time to mourn the lost and offer comfort and support. Colin Goddard is a survivor of a mass shooting. He was in a classroom at Virginia Tech when an armed man burst through the door and started randomly killing people. The gunman killed 32 people that day. It was April 16th, 2007. At the time, it was called the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. Colin has worked with the Brady Campaign to Prevent Gun Violence, served as a senior policy advocate for every town. It's the country's largest activist organization for gun safety. It's nice to see you. Again, it's been a while since we've spoken. You came in on crutches today. What's going on? Yeah, about a week ago, I had to have surgery to get some remaining bullet fragments out of my hip joint. You know, even 10 years later, having problems with the shooting, that the fragments had worked their way in the joint and were causing lead to enter my bloodstream. And long-term lead exposure to gunshot victims is a real, is a real big problem. But it's only something that happens right after the, the news is, is off and the you know, public consciousness is somewhere else. You know, these families and these people still go through these difficult times. What was the event that turned you into an activist? The moment that I became fed up and said uh, enough was April 3rd, 2009, after the Binghamton, New York Civic Center shooting. That was the first shooting that I witnessed since the one happened at Virginia Tech. And uh, I wanted to come to DC. I wanted to tell my story. I, I wanted to, to make things different. I, I couldn't believe how many elected officials told us, you know, now's not the time to talk about this or, you know, we can't do this because of the Second Amendment or some other organization, which is still a narrative we hear even today. What are the limits of the Second Amendment? The Supreme Court said that we cannot ban guns. That was the big Heller decision that a lot of gun rights activists thought was the blow to the gun safety movement. But in my opinion, that actually helped. That removed that extreme endpoint from the conversation. We cannot ban guns. But I do know that we are a smart, modern country, the best in the world, right? We can figure out problems. Certainly every other modern industrialized country in the world that has high gun ownership per capita, like America, doesn't have the same level of carnage that we see here. We can do more to reduce gun deaths and injuries without having to take guns from everybody in America. Is it disrespectful to raise an issue when people are suffering in the immediate aftermath of a mass shooting? No. We talk about what to do with emergency response after hurricanes, how to deal with aviation safety after plane accidents. I mean, these are conversations that are normal for, for logical societies to have after tragedy. The fact that we are prohibited from having this conversation on guns is purely a diversionary tactic employed by the gun industry giving talking points to elected officials to get them out of this conversation that they're afraid of having because they're worried they're going to get kicked out of their seat if they say something wrong. We know the majority of Americans, yeah. in, uh, members of the NRA included, yep. say common sense gun laws. Like there should be some basic yep. agreement on what people can do to have some kind of gun safety. Yep. That's been polled a zillion times. Why is it impossible to or seem impossible to get that done. We have to have an equal uh, force of Americans who say, no, if you don't vote for gun safety, we will kick you out. You will be replaced by somebody who stands up for basic public safety in this country. And so for so long, the NRAs had this feel to themselves. I am really encouraged by the movement that the gun safety movement has been able to, to make and grow. You know, but we certainly have a long way to go a long way to go. And we need really massive election cycles to happen where people lose their seats because of their votes. That's really the, the, where the buck stops for a lot of elected officials. And that can happen a couple times and people see, oh, well, that was just a unique case. But if that becomes a trend, as it will in, in the next cycle and onwards, then people will really think, oh, wow, the politics of this issue has changed. The policy has been there, always been good, right? It's the politics that cuts up to that. Hmm. And unfortunately, the longer we wait, the longer that takes, the Do more Americans will be shot and killed. Colin Goddard, it's nice to see you. Thanks for Good having me. Good luck with your surgery. Thanks.